they can see us. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's another episode of Burn Bright. Thank you all so much for joining us for the third, yep, had to check, uh, the third episode of the Burn Bright After Midnight uh, first look playthrough. Uh, if you are brand new to the stream, welcome. We are playing Burn Bright, which is a science fantasy game specifically designed for Roll20. Uh, over the course of this game, you will see us using the virtual tabletop uh, and kind of talking about the rules and, you know, exploring uh, the second ever campaign uh, that has been made for the Burn Bright series. So I'm excited to dive in, but before we do that, we have to meet our beautiful cast. So, Gnome, who are you? Who are you going to be playing? Hi, I'm Gnome, and I am going to be playing Little Voice Eleven, a very tall <laughs> yep. piece of crap. <laughs> that is, Technically, yes. not the tallest you could be. They say you could be like 30 feet tall, and it was really tempting. I'm glad you can fit on a spaceship. <laughs> It was a good choice. Um, and Nassim, who are you? Who are you going to be playing? Oh, hello. I'm Nassim. I am playing Vam Fam, your worn and horde of insects. Yay. And Lisa. Lisa Penrose. And I am playing a space cat named, I have a. I have it written down, <gasps> Bulgy Sustella Mortem Lie Ciela Gloss Sky. But you can call her Ciela Gloss. <laughs> Um, and she is a mysterious space kitty. Sometimes mm -hmm. she has an accent. Sometimes she doesn't. It's a character <laughs> choice and not a Lisa mistake. <laughs> Voices are <laughs> hard. Uh, and, and Eugenio. Hey, everybody. I'm Eugenio. Uh, you might know me as DM Jazzy Hands. And tonight I am playing Atash, uh, our Zivoy slug friend, uh, who <laughs> also often loses track of his accents. But that's me, <laughs> not not Atash. Uh, um <laughs> Yeah, currently Atesh is in the body of an Ulrin uh, ex-cult leader uh, who worshipped the burn. And not Atesh, the other one, the body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. so this is our darling crew, and my name is Celeste Conowich. I am going to be your game master uh, as you travel through the Olaxis galaxy. Uh, so thank you everybody for joining us once again. Uh, you will notice that we have that Tiltify bar still going, which means that you can donate at any point during this game uh, to Code 2040, which is an awesome charity organization that helps break down systematic barriers in the tech industry. Uh, so please donate. Uh, and because what's even better about it is every time we hit that $100 mark, so if we get to 1600 we are going to raffle off a copy of this fabulous campaign. So if you are enjoying it, you can get it. You can run it for your friends. Uh, you can check out a brand new game that's super duper awesome. So no reason not to donate. Uh, and our lovely mods in the chat are going to be posting how you can donate to that great cause. So with that... We're heading back, winding back into our story, our spacey story. So tell me, everyone, what happened last time on Burn Bright? We met the best creatures ever! <laughs> In the whole universe. In the whole universe. <laughs> best mm -hmm. ones right mm -hmm. here, gonna stay here. They're the Nivix. Yes. They attacked us. Yes. Started out not great. <laughs> Started out combat. That's not one of their better qualities. <laughs> Um, but they're super cute and tiny and have a bunch of arms and guns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we attacked them back and convinced some mushrooms to mushroom terrors to grab them and start dragging them into the ground. Yes, the planet Falnala is apparently full of carnivorous uh, mush mushroom plant life. So, yeah. Mm hmm. Um, then they made us trade them some stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and because, uh, they admitted that they had the people we were looking for. They did. Um, so we traded them for directions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we got to their base, uh, and tried to convince their boss that we had already traded for the prisoners and that we should just get them. Uh, but that didn't go over great. Nope. So we ended up trading more things, <laughs> including... Including oh, a yes. um, spaceship grade power cell, I believe. Um, we but it's it. fine. <laughs> we, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> but their secret weapon, which was basically a motorcycle. <laughs> oh, I think that's generous. I thought it was more of a powered scooter. <laughs> I definitely thought <laughs> it was a crotch rocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Given their size. 
Sure. Uh, so <laughs> that happened, uh, but we did get the prisoners back, and one of them was, in fact, uh, Denier, the uh, the Zivoy that we had been sent to look for. Uh, so that's good. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Huzzah. Mm -hmm. But we need to know, did Bognog survive? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> That cool. that is the uh that is the question. Um oh, hey, okay. Uh sorry everyone. We're having a small technical issue. I'm going to have to throw up a break screen real quick, but we will be right back with you uh in just one moment. Uh sorry, Zoom call drama. All right, one second. We'll be right back, gang. Oh my gosh, that's not the right one. Oh, to wow. Grognog, like uh, Bognog, wow. yeah, just wow, devastating, yeah. right? Just uh, really, <laughs> you know, just when you think you know how something's gonna go. Uh, yes, I am shocked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Typical mm -hmm. Celeste, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> truly. I I didn't realize there were Eldritch horrors in Alexis. But... Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a galaxy full of mysteries. Anyway, wow, <laughs> yay. Um. Wow, sorry about that, folks. Uh, what the great news is, I will edit this out, uh, so the YouTube <laughs> video will look amazing. <laughs> but anyway, yes, we uh, that was a great recap, everybody. Uh, so we are picking up right here on the planet Falnala, uh, where you had just walked out of this cave system that had been infested uh, by Nivix, these small creatures uh, who are very interested in procuring technology. You had managed to rescue the well everyone who remains of the crew of the midnight oil which was the ship that crashed down onto this planet that you had been hired by jade crucible uh to investigate and find so as you are stumbling out of this cavern system you have uh, quite a collection of people with you uh so you have denier of course who is the zavoy um that jade crucible specifically wanted you to find you have eldana who is an Olran mechanic. She has sort of a, a lavender quality to her crystal. Um, you have Griza with you, who is a Kithuk, um, and they were the pilot of the Midnight Oil. 
Uh, and then you have Tupelo, who is also an Olran, uh, and they were the engineer of the Midnight Oil. Uh, and they sort of have like a midnight blue uh, coloring to their crystal. Um, yeah, so all of you now are, you know, walking out of this cavern system uh, with these four individuals behind you. They have been prisoners of the Nivik, they'll tell you very quickly, for about mm-hmm. a week now. Um, so they are hungry, they are tired, uh, and they are just glad, honestly, to be walking back out into the sunlight. And um, as you do take those steps now... Um, Avoiding mushrooms. Avoiding mushrooms, yep. Uh, (laughs) Once again, yeah, these big towering mushrooms up above you. And um, as you look up towards the sky, you notice that the sky has taken on this very orangish red kind of hue. Um, It's sort of odd. Like if you've all ever been like very close to a forest fire, um, that's kind of the quality that has taken over the sky. It's time to go. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Um, it's a burning. Mm-hmm. You uh, you definitely recognize that glow in the skies, the telltale sign that the burn is on the move. Um, so it might jump closer. It might consume Oop. the planet. You never know. Um, oh. Bognog. I feel, oh, yeah. Oh, Bognog. Um, he has his fast scooter now, so he's that's fine. true. He's fine. Um, he is living his bliss. Uh, pinnacle yeah. Bognog. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you all can definitely hurry your way mm-hmm. back uh, to where you had landed Wanda. Uh, and, you know, it does still take you about 10 minutes or so to get back to that location point, And you just keep on watching the sky get redder and redder mm. as you approach the ship. As soon as we're within comms range, uh, I'll, I'll yell for Wanda to... Uh... To start up the engines. Fire it up. Uh, <laughs> and uh, she's like, all right, but uh, who's driving me this time? Because uh, last time, apparently that was your first time. I guess this is your second time, but still, I don't like those odds. She's like yelling at you over your comm as you're running like, closer to the ship. Who was driving uh, last time? Eugenio? It was Atash no. in, A-tash? Yeah, in oh, your yes, uh, yes, land yes. in Oppo's body. That's right. That's right. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, <laughs> Atash Opo, will sort of uh, about to say something to Wanda, and then sort of think better, uh, and turn to was it Tupelo that was the pilot of the Midnight Oil? Uh, Griza, the Kithok. Griza. Yeah. Uh, oh right, the Kithok. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'll turn to to Griza and say, um, uh, do you think is Wanda within sight? Can we see? Yeah, well, I yeah. I, I think as you're a... bursting through the tree line here, and you know they're running as fast as they can for people who are tired and have been forced sure. to work for, for a week straight <laughs> for those nip. oh bognog what a slave driver uh so what you uh uh does that look like something you can uh manage uh is that a it's just a basic wanderer right even with those uh sort of modification you see uh he's taking in the the big like domes of plant matter uh from you know stretching out of Wanda. I mean, if the engine's compatible, I've, I've flown a lot of Wanderers in my day. Uh, let's go with, yes, it shouldn't be too much different. <sighs> All right, well, uh, <laughs> let's take a look. <laughs> and, you know, Wanda is already letting down the, the dock in the back of the ship uh, as you all run, stumble on board here. Um, and Grisa will run with you towards the front of the ship. Uh, and all of the crew are looking around at the plant life and the humidity on board. Um, they seem sort of in awe of this this very bizarre <laughs> ship uh, <laughs> you have brought them. Uh, we'll explain later. Uh, ha ha! Uh, yes, but Grisa will, uh, you know, sit down at the, the pilot station. And um, if you would like to co-pilot, uh, Grisa mm-hmm. sort of looks over. He's like, it's it's your ship. I can do the basics. But, I mean, you know we're better than anyone. Why don't I take the engine room uh, and can get things back there and you just steer her away? Uh, all right. 
and he, you know, gets to it uh, and, you know, starts firing up controls. And in no time at all, you all feel, you know, the gentle shake uh, as Wanda takes off and, you know, gravity stabilizers come into play uh, as you begin heading up. And luckily, you did damage a bunch of mushrooms kind of coming on the way down. You cracked and made that uh that shape so you can kind of absolutely intentional shape intentional thank you uh (laughs) so you can kind of follow that same path uh as you are pulling up and into this burning red sky uh and there is that shaky moment where you feel yourselves crossing that that atmosphere line um as you launch into space and all of you can see through the view view screens that very nearby where you are because you are out on the ghost belt which is the near regions of space you see an encroaching wall of red as the burn is making one of these jumps uh towards you so it is coming towards fall nala you're not sure if it's going to completely consume the planet or not but right now it is coming like a tidal wave uh, right here and it is coming fast so to get out of the way of the burn in time I am going to need some checks from you all so here we go running away from the burn going to the gameplay screen are we ready (gasps) wow oh my gosh we're here wow we've landed oh boy all right so to escape from the encroaching burn, I am going to go ahead and need some piloting checks. Uh, so I think, Atash, uh, since you mm-hmm. are at the engines and you are mm-hmm. helping out, um, I'm going to roll this as Griza is basically giving you advantage. Um, so these difficulties or complexities are going to be reduced by one. Uh, but Great. I would still like you to make these rolls. You got it. And I will use uh, engineering, which Opo was quite good with, which is handy. Okay. Um, All right. So to go ahead and pull your way out of this encroaching flame, uh, let's go ahead and start with a complexity three skill roll. So that'll be reduced to two. Um, So you're using engineering to kind of work up the engines into a a frenzy. All right. Uh, Total of complexity two. Am I on engineering? Hope so. Here we go. (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) Nice. Yes, I was. Okay. Um, So what does it look like now, like interacting with Wanda's engines now that it's sort of a, a, like a tree trunk plant thing? (laughs) Uh, So there are, there are little uh, sort of knot holes all over the trunk of Wanda's engine now, which are where sort of the various like access points are for the whoever, whichever one of us is playing engineer that day. (laughs) but so so that's you know I'm sort of running around poking at at different knot holes but at the base of the trunk there's sort of a larger opening sort of looks like maybe it might be where the the trunk ends and the roots begin and there's ah. this little archway there and that's sort of where the obviously it's not actually like a furnace with fire but it's the magical equivalent thereof uh and and uh we just we have found this combination of like organic matter and fuel uh, that we can sort of shove in there. It's sort of equivalent to what we did last season where we got her to goose herself. Yeah. But now we can sort of help her along with it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so you are working your magic. And I think uh, where are Ciela Gloss, uh, Little Voice and Vam Fam uh, while all of this is happening? You do still have these three other, you know, people that you've saved here who who clearly need some kind of assistance so what's the plan what kind of assistance do they need i mean they look exhausted they look hungry they don't really know you know they're in a new place uh so i mean they're just kind of standing there on board while all of this is uh is happening um, Were there other rooms aside from the four that we had taken? Uh, so unfortunately not here. Let me go ahead and I'll pull up Wanda. Um, so you have the... Uh, oh my gosh, I still have a hot dog cat. <laughs> 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 oh, I still have hot dog cat for Ciela Gloss. Um, so looking at Wanda here, um, so you can enter through the airlock section. So right now, Atash is kind of zooming around. Oh, let me actually drop you all on here. Oh, there you are. Okay. 
Um, so Atash is kind of zooming around these sections here, which are the engines. Uh, and then there are the four rooms. And then it's really just this big main area. Uh, and then the front of the ship uh, is all kind of one battle station uh, combined room. I would like... Well, because they're going to need... We're quite a ways from Golgi if that's where we're returning to. Yeah, you're at least you're at least seven days from anywhere. Yeah, we <laughs> should, if everything's covered in plant life, maybe we can build hammocks. Hmm. You certainly could. Yeah, there's lots of like edges around here, so um, you absolutely have you know canvas and rough materials to to set them up comfortably. I can't look at my token seriously. Yeah. Oh my gosh, everyone! It. Oh no, I can always see it. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Every- <laughs> Sorry, I'm just zooming in for everybody at home. What Lisa picked <laughs> before we got the profiles done. Oh, good fun joke. You know, yeah, fun uh, prank. Yeah, it was a fun prank. <laughs> we have fun here. Uh, we have fun here. Uh, <laughs> so. Yes. Uh, so yeah, you can absolutely if you want to kind of get them se- settled uh, in this lounge area and then start making hammocks. For sure. Um, Little Voice and Vam Fam, what are you all up to? Vam Fam is probably assisting Skelagos. Um, Whoever seems to need the most attention, I don't know if they're hungry or thirsty or just kind of like exhausted, uh, I'll be hostessing them (laughs) and like bringing them water, bringing them whatever snacks we have, try and bring them back up to energy. Um... Yeah. yeah, Eldana, who was the, the first one you ran into, you know, she'll let you know, they didn't really feed us. We got some garbage, but we weren't sure if that was food or something we had to build. So it's been a long week. <laughs> I understand. Uh, you must be very famished. I will be back with refreshments and uh, some sustenance. Thank you. And they all sink into, you know, your collection of like love sacks that you have around <laughs> in your your very cozy little uh, lounge. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Get in. They have like the giant like adult size, uh, you know, love sacks. <laughs> uh, I dream one day of having a, a mansion full of just same <laughs> complete aside but yeah. one day my, my ex collection. brought home one of those because his friend was trying to get rid of it because he was moving and he you... didn't ask me oh, and he comes home you... with a huge bean bag and i made him put it in his office and it took up the whole <laughs> room <laughs> that's yeah, how that big they are weird that thing is. to do always get consent <laughs> from your partner before bringing home a love sack <laughs> Broke Everyone. up over a bean bag. Oh wow, that is. But it's a love sack. I brought it for you. But I love you. Here's my sack. Um, I love you with my sex. Oh my god, let's move on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> woo. Uh, all right. So while this is happening, um, and little voice, what are you getting up to in this in this moment? Not love sex. Um. <laughs> I think little voice seeing that uh, Sailor Gloss and Vam Vam have been uh, assisting the freed prisoners, I think maybe he'd probably just go help with the piling and monitor systems for threats. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, space. Yeah, you can and keep your eyes out. this is not a good out. area. Yeah, no, it's not. And the burn is coming. So I, I think you can very easily set yourself up at, you know, comms or something and just trace mm. kind of the outlines of like, you know, predicting where you think the burn is going to go, uh, sort of, you know, directing uh, your efforts here. And while it is happening, let's go ahead and make a second check um, to keep pulling ahead of the burn here. The first one was successful, so you're gaining a lot of speed, but the burn, you've seen it before, the way it moves, it's just so unpredictable and so fast. Uh, So uh, that's going to be another uh, complexity three reduced to two because uh, of Grisa's assistance. Complexity two, here we go. There it is again. Ah, nice. All right. So like clockwork, uh, you've gotten used to to using this new technology Wanda possesses. <laughs> yeah. um, so once again, you pull ahead of this tidal wave of energy. Uh, and one final time, I'm going to ask you to make a uh, another sure. complexity three reduced to two skill check to see if you can totally escape without any damage whatsoever. 
you got it. Here we go. Yeah. Oof, okay. Whoa, killing it. All right. So, uh, so nervous for later. Whew. So nervous. Yeah. So with little voice being able to, you know, call out where the spikes, where the mm. waves are going to be coming uh, and Grisa, you know, piloting expertly. Uh, and then you, Atash, giving Wanda all the juice she needs. Uh, you all are able to pull ahead just as you see that the burn finally stops. And it has formed like this teardrop shape around Fall Nala. So you can see that the planet still exists uh, and is still mm. floating in space, but this close range uh, is just completely surrounding it here. Because the burn, Oof. again, it doesn't follow any kind of logical pattern. Uh, so Fall Nala is safe today, but mm. who knows what's going to happen Good. tomorrow. Um, but with that, you manage to pull away, and there is a general feeling of relief from everybody on board the ship. Uh, and when things do, you know, sort of quiet down, um, Denier asks you all to, to sort of gather round. Um, and, uh, you know, she she's made herself comfortable on one of these big bean bags. Uh, now that she has sort of some, like, water that, she, you know, she's asked to be just, like, thrown on her. So she's absorbing <laughs> water into her, you know, slug form uh, <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, chewing on some lettuce. Uh, that Vam has been so so lovely to get for them. Scale of one to ten, how much did you hate that? Uh, a lot. It, yeah. was, it was a lot. <laughs> Chewing yeah. on some lettuce, uh, covered in water, <laughs> reclining, uh, <laughs> giant pallid white form. Uh, she says, uh, seriously, I can't thank you all enough for, for coming. Your, your timing seems, well, absolutely impeccable. Um... If there's anything I can do to to thank you, uh, please let me know. I uh, you did mention I think Jade sent you. Yes, oh, that's uh, that's great of her. Um, I, I do, however, have to ask you sort of another favor, if you don't mind. Uh, I can speak to Jade, of course, and get you whatever payment you arranged here. But with things as they are, and without a ship, well, we all need to get back to business to our home planet. So uh if you could um if you could take us to Sella, we'd really appreciate it. Sort of look to to everyone. What do we think? I, uh, I think no you're muted in the scene. Hmm? I see no problems with that. Is there uh a very far, is it a very far journey to make? Oh, no, uh, Sela's on y Yvlin 3, um, so pretty, pretty close, about, uh, about a week, maybe a little less than that, uh, to get there, but, um, Sela, you know, is full of ARC, so if you're looking for, you know, any kind of work or relief upgrades, things like that, it would definitely be a great place to stop for some adventures, and if you are interested, well... Uh, the circumstances surrounding the midnight oil crashing were a little bit suspicious. And um, if you're interested, I would like to hire you to get to the bottom of some of it. Going to ask. Yeah, well, um, so we were on our way to make plasma deliveries um, through the mid belt. You know, we, we had already gotten all of our supplies. We're ready to go. Uh, and then this this ship, this strange hooked ship, I think they call it a breacher, uh, it, it came at us and all of a sudden there were these robots that were being shot at us. They, they boarded the ship, they killed our MI, and of course once the MI was down, all of our power was gone and we just crashed onto the surface of the planet. Um, but of course that wasn't before the robots, they stole all the plasma that we had on board killed the MI and we're out of there and well it's just very weird that all these robots you know they they came out of nowhere we didn't see who they were working for they didn't have any kind of symbol on their ship uh it's a little bit concerning how much plasma are we talking about it was a lot we had been out there for weeks collecting to to help feed multiple planets uh, multiple orders, uh, including bringing some back for Sela, which, as you know, I mean, there's a lot of people down there. We need that plasma. Um, so anybody taking that pl much plasma, they do not 
have any good intentions uh, with it. And uh, where would you suggest we begin our investigation once we arrive at Zella? Well, uh, if we get down there, I can uh, meet up with some of my contacts, maybe get a little bit more information, uh, give you a place to start. Um, I did manage to get a chip uh, onto mm. one of the attacking robots. So um, once I have access to my home systems and computers, uh, I should be able to get some kind of readout. And hopefully, you know, they didn't notice it and we will have somewhere to start in terms of tracking. Little I voice, Ciela Gloss. Yes, no, please. I think Golgizi Magnificent could spare me for a uh, a little bit. Um, I'm not in a hurry to return. You are. We are under your employ until we have uh, solved this mystery. Uh, let us touch base with uh, Jade Crucible and forward uh, the message. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. That's uh, that's. Very good news. Um, if the faster we can figure out who sent those robots and what they're doing with all that plasma, I think probably the better for all of Alexis, quite honestly. Um, well, if, if that's everything, I, me and the crew, we could certainly use some rest. Um, but if we are headed to Sela, that's, that's great. We'll have some time for some R&R, &R and, and of course we can uh, start putting some theories together. You will be sure chambers are prepared. <laughs> we have two extra <laughs> spaces by the engines. Yeah, really there we'll sort of. put up sheets. Um, real San Francisco. Alternatively, yeah. <laughs> we do have we do have four empty spaces available in our cryo chamber. Uh, no, wherever is fine. We're very tired. <laughs> <laughs> You could sleep the whole week away in the cryo chamber. Yeah, you definitely, that is true. Uh, you <laughs> definitely see that the Oren engineer has already fallen asleep in the big, oh, like, squishy oh. chair. Uh, so Tupelo is just too. out. He hasn't said a word. He is just curled up, uh, a little crystal oh. on top of a big, big old bed. I've, oh. I've worked very hard on these hammocks. <laughs> Oh, it's just well, like a piece of fabric I, yeah. like tied around <laughs> um, the trees. And Denier, she looks up at it suspiciously and kind of, you know, one of her stalks sort of like droops. Uh, and she's like, well, if I can get into it, <laughs> it looks comfortable enough. You let me know if you want the cryo chamber later. That might be the best option. <laughs> um... But yeah, they will, you know, get settled in the hammocks that you made for them or otherwise. Um, Tupelo will just continue sleeping through anything um, unless you specifically get him up to move him. Um, <laughs> are you fine, baby? Um, so with that, we do have um, a few days uh, before you reach Sela. So um, I'm assuming the first thing you want to do is probably reach out to Jade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let them know that we found their crew they're all here and accounted for they did lose all their plasma but we will be accompanying them back to Sela to find out who is responsible for their crash yeah um and you know jade will message you back saying like uh thank you so much like please yes um i highly encourage you to you know work with the arc branch on Sela uh for anything you need uh, she has to stay on Golgi for a little bit more, but um, she also wires you um, a, basically a money order for Argent because Argent mm -hmm. itself is like little plankton that you keep in a like tube on board your ship. Um, so she transfers you this order. Um, so when you get to Sela, you can walk in basically to an ARC bank uh, and they will give you the amount of Argent. Oh, I did not know that's what Argent was. Yeah, so Argent, <laughs> yeah, the money, the so money in this universe, oh. yeah, is like little planktons. Yeah. Um, so that's why characters don't have individual Argent or like individual money because you have to keep it in a tank to keep it alive. So every ship is outfitted with a tank. You um, have to keep your money alive. Yeah, it's like and sea monkeys. 
And if you stick it in there for long enough without touching it, it multiplies so you have more money because it has babies. Because it has, so you can get interest, yeah, by sealing yeah. or unsealing your argent. Weird. We've never kept money long enough to seal any yeah, of it, but no, it's a thing you can do. <laughs> <laughs> but theoretically, you can seal your money for interest. Um, <laughs> Oh, good. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> so basically when you get to Sela, um, 10,000 Argent will be waiting for you um, from from Jade. Uh, and then of course, uh, Denier also said, you know, she's going to pay you to investigate what is going on with these robots. Um, and she is happy to pay you in advance um, if required, so you can be properly outfitted to chase these, uh, these individuals. Um, and so, you know, with that, we have a little bit more time um, as, you know, finally the crew of the Midnight Oil starts to recover. It takes two or three days of solid just rest and food and sleep and not seeing much of them before they actually start to come out of their shells and, you know, interact uh, with everyone feeling, you know, sapient again. Uh but I think someone who doesn't get a lot of rest uh, during this period uh, is probably Cielo, Cielo Gloss. Cielo, when you think about the before time, does it bother you? Does it manifest in dreams, in thoughts? Do you keep a diary? How does Cielo sort of interact with, with her past? I think as she's been on the run, she may have kept a diary at some point and then learned along the way that that was a liability. Um, so she no longer keeps keepsakes of any sort. It's just um, her name, her very long name, uh, written down um, on paper so that she can keep it on her. Um, and it can't be otherwise accessed uh, so that she can practice saying her name. Other than that, I'd say thinking about her life before um, still bothers her some, but less than it used to. Yeah, I think so right now we're going to kind of explore a mechanic um, of Burn Bright, which is something called the flashback, uh, which you might use um, for story paths in this game. If if an event has happened before or like on time, not necessarily on screen or during an episode, you can use a flashback to kind of explore and establish steps of a story path. So we're going to look at that right now for Ciela Gloss. Um, so I want to look at a, f a few moments here. Um, and Ciela why don't we go back to that day, the day you decided that you had to leave? Um, Before the big event happened, where were you that day? Um, that day, I was um, on Ozobni, and I was taking one of my usual laser fencing lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and describe for us... Uh, your family home on Ozobni, this this grand place. What what did it look like? Um, I think it was like if you imagine like a sprawling manor, except completely vertical. So taking up very little footprint and just like so so tall. Skyscraper. <laughs> yeah. Like a yeah, like a skyscraper, like a mansion packed up into a skyscraper like taken apart like lego pieces and stacked up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this room that you're in right now where you take your fencing lessons um what does this room look like um it looks like a a ballroom um except where you would expect like rococo like um gold scrolls and everything everything's sort of like different neon colors um, and almost sort of like a ballroom mixed with the aesthetic of like a bowling alley in a cool way. <laughs> in a way that works. <laughs> in a way that works. <laughs> Very cool. And, um, for your fencing lesson, do you practice that with a person or do you have like a robot or is it a VR program? Ooh, I feel like it is um, a VR program, but um, it's uh, either 
uh, like an experimental program or something where my family had to get special access to it to train me. Yeah. Uh, so you are in the midst of this this program. And how good are you? Did you get really good at fencing? Is this a skill that Ciela Gloss has? Um. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm pretty good. I'm looking at my character sheet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm so good at fencing. <laughs> I do all the fencing things real, real awesome. Mm -hmm. So you were in like your 10th, you know, set of lunges uh, that you're practicing, of course, that that jumping form, Um, (laughs) you know, that that only, you know, graceful Enos seem to be able to master Uh, when you're interrupted um, by the first signs of trouble. What was that? Um someone cut the program so it like really abruptly stopped and I'm lunging I now know a term Mm -hmm. I'm lunging (laughs) forward to attack this virtual enemy um and they just kind of like pixelate and then dissolve Mm -hmm. yeah and your your program cuts out suddenly and it's odd because you know you're wearing like the visor and the gloves and everything there's there's this very jarring moment uh where you have to undo your equipment uh and you see that not only has the program gone out, but the lights in this room as well. And that, uh, that gentle hum of, you know, atmosphere control has stopped. Like, all the power has been cut from this room. Mm. Um, that's certainly strange. Um, I suppose I would kind of walk to the entrance of the room kind of peer down i guess we have we must have like a human like spiral staircase all the way up but it will but the steps like are automated and move kind of like an escalator Whoa, spiral escalator, spiral escalator. Yeah. Ah, it's such a power move uh, <laughs> yeah and as you make your way towards you know the spiral staircase to like move up or down um you suddenly encounter a, a ceiling a security barrier which is something that you've installed for the different levels of the house so if anybody were to get in you can seal yourselves in or seal people out um to keep things away and the barrier has gone up but you certainly didn't activate it i think at this point um i definitely had this feeling of something seems off something seems wrong and when i feel this barrier Um, I suddenly feel trapped and I'm starting to panic a little bit. I might run over to like a window um, and just see if I'm able to open it. Mm -hmm. And as you do so, you know, once again, those security shades that have come down here, um, you seem to be sealed in this room and suddenly the room isn't so quiet anymore. There's a subtle, like something is being put into the room. My Eno ears are going to try to like hone in on where that sound is coming um, and uh, try to, f- to follow it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you do. And it's coming once again from those vents um, that instead usually are regulating air circulation. But now something is clearly being pumped in through the vents into this room. And as you're starting to notice that and you get closer, you feel yourself starting to get a little lightheaded. What do you do? Um, I like uh, take the a bit of the cloth of the robe that I'm wearing and kind of cover my face. I'm going to run back to the entrance that was sealed off and just start like and like flip my laser sword and with the blunt end of my laser sword start like banging on the the barrier there yeah and you do and you know it's it's not pretty but panic kind of takes over uh and you start to cut away at this door line here and while you can't get through the barrier itself you start to crumble at the door frame that is holding it together and as you are feeling yourself grow kind of weaker and weaker and dizzier as whatever this gas is that is being put in this room it is clearly meant to knock you out um but you managed to claw your way through uh this barrier certainly to the point when it it fails uh and the spiral staircase is open to you what are you doing i am going to rush out of the room i was probably like trying to hold my breath a little bit so take in a big gulp of air um and then um i 
I may be calling for, um, uh, uh, we probably have like, um, like a butler or some other attendants. And I may be trying to call for them just to see if anybody else is here. Mm -hmm. And as you are, you're, you're calling and, you know, you're looking down, maybe moving up and down floors. Um, you are not seeing the usual staff that should be here. Usually your house is a network of, you know, servants and people running about helping both you and your uncle uh, managing affairs, day-to-day -day business. Uh, it's so strange. No one really seems around. Um, and as you like go towards like yet another level of this house, you see down the hall, um, there is an Eno. Um, it's, it's your uncle's personal assistant. Uh, he's sort of standing there at the, at the end of the hall, listening to you yell um uh um i probably rushed to him like oh thank goodness you're here i i was in my training and the room sealed off and do you know where everybody is i was i he, is everything okay yeah he sort of looks at you with these cold eyes uh and kind of takes his hands on either side and sort of pushes you a little bit away from him and he says now miss we can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way which do you prefer i i don't understand but i do grab for my laser sword mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i really hoped it didn't have to come to this your uncle didn't think you would be clever enough to get out of the room, but, well. Uh, and you see he pulls a laser pistol that was at his side and has it trained on you. Um, I'm going to just try to instinctively swing my laser sword. And I probably know this person well enough that I still have this instinct of not wanting to hurt them. So I'm just trying to swing and, like, cut the pistol. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and give him a name. This is uh, Soren. Soren. Um, who has served your uncle loyally for decades. Um, so yeah, you are swinging at him. And I don't think he anticipated you having this weapon and sort of coming at him. Um, he stumbles uh, and giving you a window, basically. If you would like to continue running, you have Yeah, opening. I'm going to run past him he's just said that my uncle's responsible for what happened i'm going to run down this spiral escalator <laughs> um so many floors mm -hmm. uh we should probably get some sort of easier to maneuver through the house system <laughs> um, but it's ridiculous. just yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm thinking as i as i spiral downwards and where are you heading oh my gosh i don't even know um there I, I probably in a panic am just like running into the street and just kind of find myself um in an area that has like is there like a space dock yeah sort of i mean area? there are a ton of ports especially on ozobni because so many ships are constantly coming and going um there are about a billion different space ports uh, in the area ranging from bad to good to you know luxury cruise line um i think i probably find myself at like a middling uh space stock but not because i was necessarily trying to run to one i just kind of find myself there yeah and i mean quickly you're able to lose yourself sort of amidst all of these people coming and going going about their business you keep turning around to see if soren is behind you to see if anyone else is behind you but for now, it it looks clear. You you seem to be on your own, but you certainly have a choice to make. What are yeah. you choosing to do? I think this isn't the first time something like this has happened. I think this yeah. is the most obvious time it's happened, though. I think I'm... I probably spend... I probably try to hide somewhere, just sit in a sort of, like quiet space even if it's an alley like hiding behind a trash can or something i just need to kind of come to terms with all these weird things that have been happening to me um it seems soren has basically 
told me that my uncle was behind them. And I think what makes it um, both easier and harder to come to terms with is that I kind of suspected it a little bit um, um, back when uh, uh, the, uh, the rest of my family disappeared. Um, so I think I'm going to try to figure out a way to get passage on one of these ships. Yeah. And I think, you know, with some money that you've have saved away, maybe even anticipating something like this, I think you have enough resources that you could get certainly passage off the planet, um, and to whatever happens next. But why don't you take us through in a quick a quick kind of montage. What was the journey from leaving the planet? What brought you to Golgi Station? Yeah. Um, I spent some time going from ship to planet to ship to planet for a while, feeling like Soren and my uncle are, are able to trace me. Um, and I think it's because I'm using my, my name, my identity, um, uh, and uh, they're tracking uh, CL Lula uh, through uh, uh, through my journey, and eventually, I realize that I'm going to have to change my identity. I meet another uh, member of the Mortem Syndicate, um, and they take pity on me um, and. Uh, tell me that they can help me join the Mortem Syndicate to lay low, but I'm going to have to change my name. Yeah. And so you do. You give up everything of your past life and, you know, follow this this strange mage, a little too interested in death, um, but also the kindest person who you've encountered so far as you've kind of traveled lost through Alexis. Um, and even still... You know, every once in a while, you check the net. You see that your uncle is still out there and has come into his own now on Ozabni. With a sudden stroke of fortune, um, a missing heiress has landed a great deal of wealth in his lap. But luckily for now, it seems that Ciela Gloss is free from his influence. Mm -hmm. But it's hard not to think about it especially on days like this when you're just drifting through the emptiness of space shoved in a small little room like you have been so many times in yeah. recent memory. I think there's probably also a frustration that if I had what I used to have, this missing plasma, all these troubles, I could fix them so easily. Um, but now we have to do things the hard way. Yeah. And... Um, you have a lot of thoughts over this week, I think, dealing with that, dealing with everything that's happening here. Um, but we'll kind of jump back into our normal time. Um, and while this week is happening, um, while, you know, the crew of the Midnight Oil is uh, resting and recuperating, you are on the track to Sela. What else is going on uh, with our crew here? Um, I know, Atash, how's your crystal situation? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It got weird oh, a no. little. Okay. Yeah. So uh, after we got back and everyone sort of settled in, settled in, and we got the the midnight oil uh, crew settled, uh, Atash sort of went about their business uh, as normal. But that piece of uh, of Opo's body that got uh, carved out by the Nivik during that battle, it. It was really, I mean, it was sort of an intimidation tactic to patch it back in. It wasn't really a great job of regrafting a piece back on me. Uh, and it comes loose. And so Atesh goes to to grab it. And as they sort of grab it, they pick it back up and they're going to put it back. But the a light uh, just happens, a light in their, in their room happens to sort of catch the crystal. And Atesh sort of sees and... And I don't know where my, here it is, here's my rock. Uh, and sort of appreciates how lovely this piece of Oppo's body is and sort of thinks about it and sort of pokes their head out of out of the cabin to see if anyone's around. 
shuts the door, climbs up into that uh, like body hammock the body that they hammock, have yep. above there, of mm-hmm. course, <laughs> uh, which has been which is which is sort of just has a bunch of crystals on it, but otherwise has been empty of bodies because I've been staying in Oppo, uh, and so I I clear out all of the crystals from the hammock. Uh, and I go up there and I lay down facing up and sort of re-aim uh, the cabin light that's right above it so that it's right on the center of me. And then I let go of Oppo's body and sort of stream in my Zavoy slug body back onto my bed underneath and just spend like several hours just staring at Oppo's crystalline body and the way that the light is shining through it and refracting in the room. It has somehow never occurred to Atash that perhaps their love of crystals could be satisfied by in fact, one of the very things that they inhabit so often. Uh, But now they have noticed, oops. Is that a problem for the other Olran on the ship right now? Um. I think I'm <laughs> I'm fairly confident we're talking like 95% that Atash would 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 think would come out very excited and then catch sight of the midnight oil crew and be like maybe maybe I'll keep this to myself and just go back to their cabin <laughs> So this obsession has sort of gone from crystal to specifically Olran are really pretty and uh, nice yeah, to keep. Yeah, I don't. I think it's an ev- it's a it's an evolutionary addendum mm-hmm. to the crystal obsession. I think it's just like oh, I found the biggest crystal of them all, and uh. it's it's Oppo. <laughs> This is fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is extremely fine. So yeah. um, Atash has been spending a lot of time uh, in their room, I think, during this trip. Um, you know, well, I think Ciela Gloss is a little bit more pensive, perhaps, than usual. Um, little voice, what uh, what's going on with you? This is now your, you're kind of signed up for the, to be with this crew for a little bit longer here. Um, so, you know, your, your future is a little bit more certain. Um, what are you spending your time doing sort of with that new knowledge? Well, I think little voice would take most of whatever free time. If, if it wasn't spent doing chores or maintenance or just making sure that he was useful on the ship um probably pruning and caring for wanda Mm. and the growth of the ship he his uh, primary objective was a, a, a conservationist so to see a ship so embedded with technology is just harmony yeah um complete harmony for him what is that for? I, I would love to have that first conversation between you and Wanda when you're about to prune sure. something or garden <laughs> something. Please, what does that look like? Oh, oh boy. Um, real talk, I don't know anything about gardening. So, so maybe you take some shears space. and you're like, oh wow, this leaf has kind of come come in the to the pathway uh and as you i think get close you know with your shears to like cutting off this kind of this browning branch you hear over the intercom hey hey i'm sorry who gave you permission to go running around here chopping off my bits oh my my apologies wanda i'm still perplexed as to is this you? I mean, get a, get to know a little lady first a little bit more before asking all her deepest, darkest secrets. I mean, sort of, I guess. Who are you, anyway? Oh, I thought I introduced myself. Yeah, I know. I know your voice. Little voice, right? That's your name. Um, but yes, is, who are you? What are you? What are you doing here? What do you do? Oh, I, I work with the ARC, protecting domains such as this uh, in, in the light of conservation, despite the burn around us. There's much destruction and lack of resource, and if we can learn how to better use our surroundings together, 
rather than destroy each other for them, we all have a better chance of surviving. Hmm. Okay, one of those noble types, then. <laughs> You've been on a lot of ships, little boys? Several, yes. I am 11 bodies old. Hmm. Okay, so you've been around the block. I can respect that. Uh, you know, sometimes I just feel like I'm surrounded by children all over the place. So um, I do appreciate that about you, at least. In the grand scheme of things, we are all children of the universe. Well, uh, what? No, uh, okay. Um, noble philosopher. Great. Uh, well, I guess, little voice... If you would like to take care of some pruning, that's fine. Though, um, if you're going to continue to do this, I think I should get to know you better. You should come visit me sometime in my jack. Oh, well, of course, if that is what you would like. Uh, I only wanted to take care of this. Um, you are spotting. That means there is a potential lack of nutrients. You hear, like, a... <gasps> sound you know i'm sort of new to all this thing but sure if you want to take care of it that's fine i'm not ready today but maybe next week you can come and visit good day and she sort of hangs up the call oh did i offend her he asks the, the air she no. <laughs> she she does not respond. Vam fam is probably like parts of them are like through scattered throughout the ship, and then like a, f a bunch comes out and goes probably, and then goes away. <laughs> Vam, yeah, <laughs> sick burn. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so I think Wanda. <laughs> I think Wanda starts talking to you a lot, little voice, just like weird little questions, or she'll just comment on things, even if you don't directly address her. Um, she seems sort of fond of you, but in a very passive-aggressive way. Um, so that's uh, that's sort of your experience. Um, great. great. Make it friends. Mm. <laughs> Wanda's complicated. Um, and uh, Vam, uh, anything you're getting up to specifically over the course of this these few days? Yeah, probably a few things. Uh, first, catching up on our fan mail and, you know, our correspondence. Mm -hmm. uh, writing back, finishing a few emails, a few drafts. Yeah, so and... actually a lot of the Vam fam is currently located on Sela. Um, so Ooh. Sela is a city that has been built into this, like, gigantic abandoned kind of mine. Um, so the ARC kind of came in and took this, like, abandoned place and then started hosting a bunch of, like, refugees from a ton of planets all over the place that were, like, displaced. Um, and these camps sort of grew and grew into a much bigger city um, that now is a thriving place. So a lot of your your family actually lives on Sela um, or you know they have somebody who lives on Sela or like run supplies and like goods to Sela um. I love it uh, then he we are giving a sort of like heads up we will be on Sela we are happy to arrange a meet and greet <laughs> oh my gosh I love it you can have like pub night vam fam pub night yeah exactly I will arrive here at this inn and would love to catch up with anyone willing to share their experiences here on the planet I am also seeking certain information so any anyone aware of a band of robot pirates <laughs> your information is very valuable <laughs> you like blast this out on your message boards and you're getting oh. ton of like likes and comments and people being like, oh my god i'm gonna be there and i'm gonna bring can i bring my friends and then also like people are like oh man i just left Sela. like no uh <laughs> you know on your on your message boards but people are hyped that you are coming to visit um and yeah what what uh there are lots of places available on Sela. do you have a specific bar restaurant locale that you're looking for i think you could probably find any kind of venue uh that vam was interested in uh let's say a comedy club okay <laughs> i love the idea that vam fam would be like oh yes comedy club <laughs> um all right 
Get ready. They're the cause... best person to invite to your improv or comedy show because that's like a ton of like hundreds of thousands of insect yeah, laughs. They will fill those seats. They're, they're immediately <laughs> going to give you that audience clap and laughter you need on a bad joke. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Okay, so Vam Fam loves comedy clubs and I'm <laughs> writing yep. it down. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, when we get there, be prepared with a good name, though, because I'm going to okay. ask. All right. All right. Gotcha. So you're catching up on fan mail. Um, what else are you up to? Uh, I believe we are also, we love to internet search. Oh, yes. So we're going to do as much preliminary searching. Um, what is what is it called again? Our oh, the Complenet. The Complenet. Yes. Through the Complenet. We are searching for uh, known or conspiracy theories of, like, robot uh, groups or creeds of some kind after plasma, things like, basically any any kind of, like, gang or thing like that, syndicates who, who pirate plasma. Okay, so I'll definitely give you some information, but if you want to find something very specific that would help you, I think this is going to be pretty hard. So I'm going to put this at a complexity four. Um, okay. So what would you like to use to try and find uh, some some information here? Uh, let's use computers. Okay, let's do it. See how we use them computer skills. Beep you boop. said four. Yes. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, Okay. <laughs> what the heck you guys oh my god um it's a good night <laughs> wow okay so first off just looking like robots olaxis there are a million conspiracy theories about uh robots uh in general because olaxis in particular has a very colorful history with artificial intelligence to um robots it's always a tricky subject uh so in the history of olaxis uh there came a point when the glean which are sort of the space jellyfish uh species they developed artificial intelligence um and basically used them like servants and it was great for a time you know while they were helping out building up the galaxy and then of course all of a sudden you know the ai were like no we want to be free they rose up uh uh, it was a whole war between AI and sapient races. Um, and then at the end of that, there was a complete ban on all artificial intelligence ever made, um, which makes magical intelligences in the sh in powering ships sort of a taboo issue um, because people are like, is it AI? Is it not AI? But right now, because everybody's so desperate from the burn, there's not a lot of time for people to ask moral quandaries so because of that history robots are always a bit of a question mark um, because whenever anybody gets too advanced with their robots then it becomes that issue like are we walking the line once again of ai so most robots that exist in alexis are specifically programmed for a very specific purpose by a specific individual um, so if this was a team of robots they were likely hired or built by one person to get all of this plasma and to take it back um, to a specific place. Uh, it is odd that none of the robots had any kind of symbols or icons on them because uh, robots are required to have registered marks, uh, so it's really easy to identify who owns them. So whoever did this um, definitely didn't want to be found out. Uh, the fact that they had an entire ship uh, piloted only by robots means that whoever did this has a lot of money uh, to be able to send this robot crew out. Um, so that is, though that's kind of the general information you get. Um, specifically, you you wouldn't be able to say uh, who sent these robots. I mean, there's a lot of people in Olaxis who could be responsible for the resources uh necessary to pull something like this off like any of the overguild bosses um the overguilds are sort of like the big like merchant lords of olaxis um anybody else like uh with with a ton of money maybe from one of the heart worlds um 
but unfortunately that's going to be sort of the best you get until you can figure out where the robots went with the plasma uh that's about the the dead end you get to okay you said again hurt worlds oh the heart worlds um, heart worlds. The heart worlds are the the planets right at the center of Olaxis, so the safest oh. part of the galaxy. Um, so those are like like Ozabni, for example, is a heart world um, because it's like right close to the center, and people with a lot of money hang out there and live there. Um, yeah, so okay. that's that's sort of the the cursory you get. Um, okay. Yeah, and all of you can definitely you know share this this information. Um, and, you know, Daenerys will promise that she'll do as much as she can uh, to get you that information uh, you need. But in almost no time at all, you find yourselves approaching uh, the planet here. So once again, um, let me just make sure I get all the names right <laughs> of this planet. Okay. Yeah, so you are heading to Sela, which is a city on the moon of Yvlen III. Um, and this planet is in the mid-belt, so it's in between, you know, the heart worlds are at the center, then there's the mid-belt, then there's the ghost belt. Um, so you feel pretty confident that the burn isn't going to be a problem here. You are sailing closer and closer towards the center of the galaxy, which is uh, nice, gives you a little bit of breathing room. Um, and as you approach uh, Yvlen you see it is a very gray, rocky sort of planet, not very attractive. Um, it's fact, it's very cold, and the surface of the planet is fairly inhospitable, um, which is why the ARC spent so much resources setting up Sela inside of this cavern system. Uh, so as you approach the planet and you approach kind of the gaping holes in the earth that lead down into the city, um, you land you know, in inside of this big tube uh, where you see all of these different spaceships are being diverted into different directions to kind of land themselves in these honeycomb caves that line the walls here, um, like a big giant parking garage <laughs> made out of stone. So uh, you get down to the planet and of course, uh, Denier, you know, calls in towards like the, the operations control on the ground and gives like a clearance code in her number uh, and you all are directed to a certain like parking area for ARC ships uh Wanda is landed safely uh you are met by like a Kathuk who comes up and seems to know Denier and promises to look after your vessel and gives you all like a little card uh so when you need to leave the planet you'll just you know hand in the card they'll get your ship <laughs> it'll be a whole the code thing. check for our ship it is yeah <laughs> um, I love it you can't be flying around inside these big tubes <laughs> It's a series of tubes. It's a series of tubes. Um, and, you know, as you, like, land and start to walk into this this place, Sela is amazing the way it's been set up. Because, again, it's just this series of mining tunnels that have been kind of converted and carved out to make more of a city feel. So you see a lot of the central tunnels um, have been widened out. Uh, so as you're walking down, it almost looks like a sort of a funnel from your perspective. So you walk out onto the first ring here, which is the widest. Uh, and you can see that shops and, you know, crowds and just buildings stacked on top of each other and stacked really close together lie in this complete like outside ring here. Uh, and then there are sets of steps and ramps that lead down to yet another ring um, of all of these places. And every once in a while you do see that there are tunnels that branch off from these main rings where you think probably more housing um, and other pathways are but this place is crowded um, there are lots of people moving through uh, these streets here and since Sela is mostly like a town full of refugees there are people from all different like sapient species across Olaxis um, in in different states of dress and distress um you see that there are people who are clearly brand new to the planet um loading in you know just with like rough spun knapsacks and this you know look of loss uh, as they're kind of wandering through the streets uh next to a bunch of other people who are moving through um handing out like bandages and food uh, as you see arc representatives are trying to tend to the people who look the most confused or lost um there's a feeling of goodwill 
I think that kind of fills Sela here. Um, a lot of people choose to live on Sela because they have the means to help the people who come here. Um, and, you know, since there is such a heavy ARC presence, this is probably the the one place in Alexis where there's some kind of, like, real organized ARC presence. Uh, and Daenerys, you know, says to you all, well, I have to get to my home and start doing research and everything, but I am happy to recommend a place to, to put you up and to, of course, pay for your rooms. Do you have any kind of preference on where you would like to stay? We have several fine uh, hotels. You have any seamed hotels? Uh, yes. What are we looking for? <laughs> what kind of themed hotel do you want to what stay kind at? Of Goodness. Well, we already did the casino thing. Yeah, you did the casino uh, thing. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. so there's like something small, like a like a bed and breakfast. Oh yeah, like a oh. space bed and breakfast. Oh yeah, it's bed and breakfast. Like a really <laughs> little like cottage core bed and breakfast. <gasps> yeah. uh, absolutely, yeah. space eggs in the morning. Yes, those people definitely have crystals. <laughs> yes, um, and you know, Denier will say, oh. There's a lovely glean couple I know that runs a, a delightful bed and breakfast. It's called the Sunny Spot, mm -hmm. which is, um, they, they do have a, a tunnel that goes to the surface, and technically, they do get some sun. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Denir will take the time to, to walk you down a couple of these rings here uh, and lead you down one of these side passages. And you see that there is, uh, at the end of this tunnel here, a little cottage front um that has been built up it's been taken a lot of times somebody has painted this and like molded uh maybe clay on the outside to make it look like the front of like a wooden little cottage here that's like whitewashed with a little fence and these little like ceramic flowers have been made and patches on the outside uh and this of course is connected to a bigger stone edifice just behind it which must you know be the the true structure um but yeah, it's called, it has a little sign that's called the sunny spot. Uh, and you do see a, a crack that leads up to the surface of the planet. Um, there's currently no sun coming up now. You know that in rotation here uh, on the planet, you'll only get sunlight for about two hours a day. Um, but boy, it must be marvelous. <laughs> two hours. <laughs> um, and Denier will say, just let them know that you're with me and, and they'll take care of you. Um but please, uh, enjoy the, the city, I guess. Uh, it might take me a couple days to, well, get the full results back and everything. But I'll, I'll contact you here as soon as I have something. Thank you, Denier. It was nice to spend time with uh, another Zavoy. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh... It's good. It's good to see uh, more of us, you know, getting out there, adapting to things and... Um... You, uh, you take care, Atash, here. Yeah. It, it's good to, you know, stretch your, stretch your oh. stuff every once in a while. Uh, yeah, Little Voice said something similar. I'll take it under advisement. Hmm. All right, well, uh, give a holler if you need anything. And she starts to, like, slowly slime <laughs> her way out into that main <laughs> ring. <laughs> We all just stand there watching her go for a while. Do you think it's polite to... No, no, we have to wait. We, va okay. <laughs> we have, have to wait. wait. <laughs> and she turns the corner. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness. <laughs> it's a wonder anybody gets anything done on Zavoy planets. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Um, so the uh, this cozy little odd sculpture slash building um, is uh, is waiting in front of you. A fucking sight. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you do you you open up this this little door here, uh, and you see a very cute 
little sitting room uh, in front of you. There are lots of like carved wooden chairs that have different like patterned cushions uh, and the wall has lots of like dried flowers that have been hung up all around and there's a small little counter slash like table um, that has lots of like ceramic like scenes on it of different cute. like very cute versions of like sapient species that you found around like all set up um cool. and as you come in you know a little bell rings um and you hear a, oh hello <laughs> from from like a back room hello we seek lodging <laughs> oh yes Oh, one moment, one moment, and uh, sort of uh, coming out from this hallway, uh, you see a glean, um, and glean are yeah, about four by four feet sort of circle-like creatures with lots of these tentacles uh, coming down from them that they use to walk, um, you know, all these little feet at once as this glean is coming towards you, and it has a big, like, um, red crystal um, in its uh, forehead as it kind of considers you with these squinting little eyes. Uh... Is that all of you? Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh. Ooh. Wow. Lots of be. Are you all? You all want separate rooms? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh. And this glean, you know, start sort of like moves some of these ceramic figures all over their their main little desk area and takes down this book. Like, a, an honest-to-God oh. book, which is a very weird thing to see in Olaxis, um, as they take this book and they kind of put it down, uh, you know, and they're flipping through pages with some of their tentacles while the other tentacles are reaching back and trying to, like, find a pen, you know, looking in different cups. Um, and is like, oh, how long will you be staying with us? Um. A few days. Okay, a few days. You want to pay by the day then? Uh, yes. Preferably. We are we are vis uh, denier. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh well, an absolutely no charge. Denier is a good is a good friend of ours. Ooh. Um, if you could all just sign your names here. Uh, and the glean sort of pushes the book over towards you all. Yeah, sign away. We do have one palace suite available. Would any of you be interested in upgrading? She's so happy about it. I know. <laughs> um, I feel like Ciela Gloss will say yes just because she feels bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, that so sounds exciting. lovely. Oh, palace <laughs> sweet. Good. Uh, wonderful. <clears throat> well, that's everything. Here are your keys. Uh, and, you know, more tentacles come around um, and open up cabinets and drawers. Uh, and you each get these keys that are basically like they each have weird little tchotchke like keychains attached to them. Ooh. So, um, Ciela Glass, what is the little keychain that is attached to your palace sweet room key? What I want so bad yes. is for it to be really lovely and nice, but everything in the palace suite is dog themed. Okay. And Sela hates it. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there's like a big, like a stuffed golden retriever keychain. <laughs> like it's a whole thing and it's like holding the ring in its mouth. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, and then Atash, what is the little tchotchke on your keychain? I think it's too easy if it's a crystal. So, uh, I think it's actually a oh it's uh it's actually a little tree like a little I don't know ceramic like tree uh which Atash is very excited about because he wants they want to show Wanda oh yes uh, that 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 in a way they're still living with Wanda. Oh, that's nice. Um, it really feels like he's got to do something to get on Noana's good side after letting slip that it was his first, that it was their first time piloting. <laughs> you just had, you had no experience. Um, and little voice, <laughs> what is the trash key on your keychain? The trash key is a cluster of sunflower seeds. 
Oh. Oh. So I see these. Uh, and then, uh, Vam, what about yours? I feel like if it's a, a dog themed resort or inn, then Vam's is like a little dog, like squatting with its leg up, peeing on a ship. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. That's like <laughs> a masterpiece. Um, <laughs> it's like that big. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so you, you get these keys, uh, and you can check out these equally interesting rooms uh, that are vaguely themed uh, towards each, each of your keychains. Oh, no. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> this glean uh, is sort of floated up behind you all and says, we serve breakfast promptly every day at 7 a.m. <laughs> Uh, so if you would like to meet, we all sort of eat together in the main room. Um, if you have any questions about Sella, my wife and I, we've lived here for a very long time. So we, we're happy to help. Any interesting uh, uh, rocks? Uh... Oh, there are lots of rocks. This This used to be a mining system. Right, what was mined here? Oh, uh, oh, there was rocks and um, space uh, ores and uh, the glean seems to have no idea. <laughs> I love this glean. Uh, no, that, that's, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, okay. Mm, yeah. uh, anyway, uh, I'll let you get to it. <laughs> <laughs> and this glean sort of floats away again and disappears somewhere into the rest of the the bed and breakfast. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you all are at the best bed and breakfast ever. Um <laughs> Anyway, uh, what would you all like to do? Uh, we do have a meet and greet set up for Vam Fam. Uh, that's going to be happening. That's our big event. Um, I'm assuming you all are invited to to that. Or wait, Vam, or do you want? Okay, yes, you are all Everyone invited. Gonna come and support. Yeah. Um, do we have like Vam Fam T-shirts we can wear? I don't know. Have you made T-shirts, Vam Fam? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, okay. This is not our first meet and greet. Oh. So we realized that the first time we had no merch and people were very upset. Yeah. So we came up with an idea and basically it's it's just like a white tee with a bunch of little bugs like printed. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, I would wear that. Gross. <laughs> oh God. No, it's so good. Like little patterns, like, like a floral yeah. shirt, except they're yeah. all like little beetles. Oh, yeah. I was what were you imagining picturing? like very realistic looking bug images printed oh, all over yeah, my that's clothing. What I, was too. No, that's I would wear too. either of those. I would wear like, either of those. Yeah. The one underneath the other. Like, what's going to be a button up at this point? The like, layers. Um, <laughs> right? Very good. So, you brought your box of him. <laughs> yeah. All right. Excellent. I would like, do you, can there be like really big, like beetle sunglasses or something? Oh God, uh, I feel like Ciela accidentally signed the wrong name in the book. <gasps> and now she's really stressed out. So she wants to cover her face as much as possible. Whoa. Yes, Ciela, here, have this prototype pair of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Super like gigantic. And yeah, have big, like, <laughs> Half dome little antennas. Oh, so so you look so huge good. Huge antennas. Uh, yep, yep. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, here in Sella, you do have access to a ton of things uh, that you would find in a thriving metropolis. You can buy ship upgrades. Um, so this would be a great place to get modules to to upgrade Wanda. Um, I will say. So you all have about twenty thousand argent right now. You got ten thousand from Jade. Uh, for rescuing the miners. Um, oh, yes, you have to go and pick that up, but oh, right. you can do that at any ARC bank. Um, there are several here on Sela. Um, so you'll be able to get that Argent. Um, you can buy those modules. Uh, we have that event for us at this comedy club, uh, What? It, what which is called? A heckling Hacker. Oh, my God. Ooh, nice. Heckling yes. Hacker. You was ready with that. I, <laughs> I told ready. you to be ready. <laughs> I'm going to ask you what it looks like next. So think about it. Um, 
So, all right, so you have this event, um, and then yeah, other than that, anything else you might like to do or buy in these couple of days? At some point, uh, H would like to go see about getting a uh, just a little message out to uh, Ola and Lou, oh, just yeah. to check in, see how things are on their end. Do you um, do like the equivalent of like writing a letter? You know, you can go to like a post office, and maybe there's. I don't think there's like really snail mail but there's got to be a kind of mail that's like better than email you know that they have in the future yeah definitely yeah and that's that's yeah because we've emailed a couple times but it's uh, it's so busy and it feels so impersonal so yeah exactly we do a sort of um <laughs> we i write a i write a like a letter out that gets you know scanned in and sent uh and and i include a, a picture of of some crystals Oh, good. <laughs> oh, I also thought about you could uh, also if you wanted to record like a hollow, like a hologram or a hollow chip. So like a message <sighs> of you, you could I imagine they probably have these places you can go to. They scan you. Um, and so, you know, you can record and like a video message um, in 3D. I love that, That'd too. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Let's be honest. Uh, Atash is not going to waste the resources to write something out when it you could, could be also a pure bring data your thing. favorite crystals and they'll get scanned and you can hold them up oh, I mean, so they can see sure. them three D. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So you go and record uh, one of these one of these cool messages. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, sweet. So uh, I'll let you all think about those chip modules maybe for next time, uh, and we'll make okay. sure to buy those. But. Um, but yeah, I think, do we all want to go to a comedy club for yes. meet and greet? All right. So uh, what do you wear to, I guess, describe for us the the atmosphere of the heckling hacker, um, Nassim, so we, so we all know, we can all prepare ourselves. Um. Well, considering on an average night for comedians here uh, on Sella, uh, it's it's the worst place for a comedian. It's mm -hmm. its name just welcomes the hecklers. They mm -hmm. feel at home there. It's their space. Yep, yep. So there's like a very strange pattern of audience where like the front row is actually above the seats behind it. There's like a gap between the first three rows and the first three rows are like right there at the stage. Oh and then God. there's like a nice like uh, uh, ramp between the rest of the rows that are like in the distance so you almost can't see the rest of the crowd you only see the first three rows <laughs> it's very scary and intimidating for actual comedians and then the bar is like way in the back but since it's our night here it's all of the vam fam mm -hmm. so it's really great people people who have been through some hardship they're not gonna heckle Maybe there's some stragglers left behind thinking, oh, what's going on here? There's a comedian. I need to give a hard time. <laughs> but it's it's the fam. We're all yeah. here. We're all having a good time. And uh, yeah. Nice. All right. So I, I think you can all roll up pretty cash, uh, it sounds like, to, to this sort of event. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah. So I'm wearing you, my bug t-shirt. Yeah, your bug t-shirt bug glasses any other yeah anybody any particular things other than we we know ciel has got a look unlock um. uh, i think atash is is in in zavoy form Ooh, uh, nice. and and wearing a bug t-shirt as well uh and they're a little twitchy because they purposely decided to do this so that they could focus on Vam tonight mm -hmm. and Aww. not stare at themselves. And not stare at their crystal <laughs> That's form. That's so sweet. Aww. And weird. Yeah. And weird. <laughs> that is a bit. I imagine a your t-shirt is sticky. <laughs> Yeah, the little I have, noise. I have a few noise. extras so that when they get saturated, I can change. Them. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't charge for our t-shirts. We're happy to give them away. Oh, <laughs> um, does little voice uh, wear anything special to a night at the comedy club? Oh, of course. Yes. This is all about supporting your friends, right? Yes. So we, so normally he has that orange jacket, and it's like closed up but tonight it's opened so he also has his vam fam vam kind 2937 what year is it <laughs> no just say numbers <laughs> it's it's that yeah, year. So it is the year um you year know on the of, shirt but yes. i feel like <laughs> 
But I feel like he's going to have, like, if there's, like, a baseball cap of some sort or some type of hat, like, it's somehow, like, I mean, it's so small in comparison to his big helmet head. And then, um, like, a little flag antenna just, like, Cute. sticking out of, like, the back of his shoulders. Oh, uh, so good. Uh, you all look so great uh, as as you roll up. Vam, are you, what are you, are you wearing your own merch? Or what's your, what's your look? Is that gauche? I don't know. Is that... <laughs> Um, probably just for the fun of it, wearing like a couple t-shirts. Some of them are just floating around in our horde. Yeah. Um, a a little clump of insects are flying off, breaking off from the horde to like drop t-shirts into the crowd. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Um, so as you, you know, oh, sorry. I had a very important question. Was anyone (laughs) cosplayed as (gasps) FanFan? Oh my god, yes. So I think you all <laughs> you walk into, you know, the the this the heckling hacker, uh, which is in full like party mode. Of course you waited, you know, like fifteen minutes after the time to show up. So a bunch of people have gathered here. You see a ton of different uh, just a crowd of different excited faces, uh, you know, swarming around the bar, uh, talking to each other, sharing their stories, you know, how they like got, you know, involved with the Vam Fam. Uh, uh, and you know all the good that they've done and uh as you walk in you know there's like a <gasps> you know that fills the room and then you all are swarmed as all of these people are trying to talk to vam fam and you do totally see someone they've like rigged out um like a like sort of a helmet like skull cap thing that they've painted like that iridescent like colors oh. um and they have the big like iridescent Cute. glasses so they shine you know like a beetle I love this. Yeah. me too um, <laughs> and everybody's you know all these people are trying to tell you like oh, i met an aurora nan you know here and then i told them about you and then they're busy and like but this and you helped my friend you know escape from this place and like without you like i i would never would have like found my calling and you know a bunch of people are just swarming you uh at this moment but the love in the room is palpable um all of you are all of you are feeling just the big positive energy that is circling around this space. Um, oh man! When when Vam enters and ha- gives like their initial greeting, they like just do their their relaxation ritual, which is also meant to like greet the entire crowd, where they just like expand into a big cloud of insects to like swarm around everyone in the room and like give a quick like hello it's so great to see you thank you for coming and showing your support and welcome to the community the family um eventually taking to the stage to give like a big welcome speech like grab a drink uh, uh we are so pleased you are here you are proof that the family is strong and when we come together there's nothing we can't accomplish we are here for each other and know that your family is always there for you yeah and there's like a big cheer you know clapping that's going around as everybody is just you know hanging on your every word um as you are addressing this crowd here um Anything else in particular you would like to say or just kind of enjoy the the merriment and the atmosphere? Mm. Well, how about we just ask if there is anyone seeking a a brief uh, stint of employment uh, mission, (laughs) basically calling upon my minions now. Uh, (laughs) I knew you were going to use those minions as soon as you... (laughs) told me that ability um yes you're calling upon your minions to do what yeah. <laughs> yep. uh just to just ask if they if they'd want to work for us and see if they would like to seek out a certain group of ruffians and pirates and uh dangerous ai who are wreaking havoc on hard-working uh plasma miners Oh, and, you know, there's a murmur around the room um, as people, you know, start to talk to each other and be like, yeah, we'll get you some details. And like things kind of break down as like over the course of the night, you know, people will come up to you and like tell you leads or say like I'm available for work or, you know, um, these are just some of the conversations you have um, over the course of the night. Um, 
And I think all of you, you know, it's it's a pretty good time. There have been appetizers that have been included. You know, everybody gets like a couple drink tickets, um, things, you know, eventually comedy performances start. Uh, and it's all very casual and fun. And a couple of even the family who are, you know, amateur comedians uh, get up there and they'll tell jokes about you and like the, but in like a cute way, um, like <laughs> we give hearty laughs for them. Yeah, <laughs> it's um a lot of impressions of you which is sort of weird um but people people love <laughs> they're like i memorized your you know your video speech that you did last month uh lots of you know <laughs> weird but cute things um and i think you know it's maybe an hour or two into the evening uh when vam um somebody approaches you and you realize that it's one of the the staff who works uh, at this place here and they say uh, I'm guessing that your Vam Fam, based on <laughs> just like looking at the merch and everything. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, this was just delivered for you. Uh, they left before I could get a name or anything, though. But they said it was really important. Um, and it's a box. Uh, maybe like a foot by a foot cubic box that's been wrapped in uh in just like black paper hmm. and uh did you get a good look at the uh deliverer of this package um uh, no not not really i i was tending the bar it's been a pretty busy night but they came in and kind of slid it down and said it was for you and before i could ask anything else uh... well all right thank you very much for the delivery yeah, sure, nothing. Um, need anything else? He looks around. Uh, more drinks. Another round for everyone. And they're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this bartender sighs and's like, "Hi, right, well, <laughs> everyone's tipping well. That's all I can say." So, <laughs> it's a crowd of good people. I imagine they tip well. Yeah, it's, it's like nerds at conventions. Like we're. <laughs> we good um, this is the time that they they let loose <laughs> yeah exactly um so yes this this bartender will you know head back behind the bar and you have this mysterious package okay i will unwrap it all right i uh, just doing it here on the table in front of everyone um, no reason now that you just said it like that what? i don't want I'm to just curious <laughs> So well, many I will do it in those. like the middle of a crowd. If there's like an empty table somewhere off to the side, I'll go sit down and open it up. Okay. Uh, so you do, you find like a booth kind of, you know, away from uh, the general crowd um, and you tear off the paper and yeah, there's this little, it's like a sort of a wooden crate um, without the wrapping paper on it. Do you want to pry it open? Sure. Quickly, I want I want like a, a little bundle of my insects to swarm around it and like sniff it, see if there's any traces of anything interesting or outstanding on this little wooden crate um, or sounds coming out of it. Um, yeah, you you know, there's no sounds coming from it. Um, <laughs> there's sort of a, a a smell like an earthy smell um that that comes from this thing but other than that you can't really tell uh, any other details okay then we'll open it so you open up this box um and inside there's a bunch of like packing soft packing material that surrounds this object uh which seems to be a sphere um again yeah this thing and maybe like eight by eight inches so a pretty hefty sphere um, and it looks like the surface of it is carved stone of some kind. Um, you see carved into the surface are a bunch of strange runes. Um, maybe they're letters. It's not in the language that you know, certainly. Um, but completely cover the surface of, of this thing. Ooh. We are immediately fascinated. And once again, we swarm this stone trying to just memorize and like imprint all the little symbols on it and try and like see if we can identify what kind of stone it is all of that mm -hmm. yeah and as you know your your form you start to crawl across the surface of this thing 
you hear something and it takes you a minute to realize it's not a sound that you're hearing with your ears, but rather something you're hearing with your mind. It's like a note, like a sad music note that kind of plays off across your mind and you get the feeling of emptiness. And that's where we're going to end our game for today. Mysterious. Wait, what time is it? It's 7.50. Ooh, I know. It's nice. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that is where we are ending our story for today. I definitely wanted to take some time to go around and touch on our story paths, though, because I feel like we, we definitely explored some things today. Um, so does anybody feel like they have achieved um, some story path moments today? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Oh yeah, Eugenio's <laughs> creeping hand. Yes. Uh tell us. Tell us what yeah. what, what has a touch uh so the the first event for the temptation story path mm -hmm. is it looks so good. Yes. You have a specific obsession with a vice. In my case, crystals. Yes. Uh, you might indulge in it regularly, or you might have tried to keep it repressed. Nope. But an opportunity <laughs> that you cannot pass up just presents itself. Well, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's some examples. Blah, blah blah. You complete this event when you succumb to temptation and participate in a new vice or in an old one in a novel way. Yeah, I, I well, feel like you've qualified for that. So certainly go ahead and tick that off. Uh, and what is what is the reward you get for completing that event? So for this one, I get to increase the size of one of my either mental or social dice. Oh, very cool. And I will be stepping up a social die, but I'm not sure which one yet, so I'll let you know. Very Probably cool. either presence or decorum, but I will have to have a look. Neat. Yeah. Uh, anyone else feel like we hit a uh, story path moment today? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Nassim, what was your oh, what yeah. story path moment? That yeah. mysterious little present. Uh -huh. It's our artifact, I believe. Oh, oh yes. Story path artifact unleashed. First uh, event is finding or obtaining the artifact. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that would be it. Cool. What's your reward for that story path event? I get to increase the die size of one of my mental skills by one. Mm, very cool. You're getting mm -hmm. brainier. Um, Brainy. And Lisa, you were raising your hand as well. Yeah. Um, so my story path is double life. And my mm -hmm. first event is the new you. You have a reason to go undercover and create a new person to become, which we got to explore uh, through Dude. my flashback. Yeah. And my outcome is that I get to increase the die size of one of my social skills by one. And so I chose deceive, uh, which seemed thematic. Yeah. All right, very cool. So we're getting some uh, traction on these story paths. Um, and we are certainly going to continue to explore these and all of the other troubles happening. What are these robots? What do they want? Find out next time on Burn Bright. Uh, this is a weekly show. So you can find us at the same time right here on this tw uh, this channel uh, next Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern start time. Or, of course, um, let people know, too, if you want to share the show, uh, recommend it. All of these uh, videos are posted to the Roll20 YouTube channel. Uh, so you can watch season one. You can, you know, get people who are sleepy to watch the show there uh whatever you want um but please you know make sure to let us know on socials uh that you're enjoying the show and be sure to follow subscribe uh, and just tell somebody about burn bright because it's an awesome game uh that more folks should be playing uh so with that let's go around uh to our lovely cast uh tell the folks where they can find you let's start in reverse order and mix it up yehenio where can people go to find you <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! Hi, everybody. I'm Okenio. You can find me on uh, Twitter and here on Twitch at DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, let's see, where can you find me? You can find me in your ears on Wednesdays uh, with my actual play D&D podcast, The Last Refuge. We drop new episodes every Wednesday. Uh, and you can follow us on Twitter at DND Last Refuge. Otherwise, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays in the afternoons, uh, I stream on my channel here playing some video game RPGs. Uh, right now, we are 
bopping back and forth between Dragon Age Inquisition and Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, and then other than that, on Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, if you want even more space, but very different space, uh, you can come hang out uh, on Cypher of Tears channel here on Twitch uh, for Into the Motherlands, a uh, brand new sci-fi setting uh, and, and uh, setting of the new Cortex Prime system. So yeah, that's where you can find me. Yes, space is so big. There are so many types so of space big. inside of it. Um, <laughs> and Lisa, where can folks go to find you? Hi, everyone. I am Lisa Penrose. Uh, I am a game designer, variety streamer, and brand manager over on Dungeon Masters Guild. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at Lisa Penrose. Um, and then I also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash behold her, uh, where you can hear about my podcast. And um, honestly, there's a bunch of cool projects I'm working on that I'm going to start teasing on there. So check it out. Yes, and the same. Where can the people find you? People, come find me on the social medias <laughs> at Nazgul. And then also on the Venture Maidens Twitch channel where we stream every Wednesday night. <laughs> yes. And Gnome. Hi, I'm Gnome. You can find me at Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram at Nomadic. Uh, yeah, I do lots of things in TTRPG places. Uh, most notably, though, right now, you can catch me just on my channel. Uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday, every morning, waking up with a uh, good friend, Eris Savad, and we just talk about games and RPGs and have some chats with our friends and wake the heckin' heck up. Wake the heck up. <laughs> The heck up. Heck up. Um, and my name is Celeste Conowich. To keep up with all the things I'm doing, uh, producing, podcasting, designing, publishing, follow me on Twitter at C Conowich. Uh, I would love if you checked out my latest supplement up on the DMs Guild, Puzzle Master, which is a collection of 10 puzzles and an escape room dungeon. Uh, if you really want to give your players a new experience. Uh, so check out Puzzle Master there. A uh, beautiful over 20 hand illustrated um, handouts uh, compatible with VTTs and in-person play. Uh, so I would love if you check that out. Um, other than that, yeah, find me on Venture Maidens. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. I cannot wait to see what happens next week. And until then, everybody, blessed off. Blessed off. Blessed off. Blessed off, everybody. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>